Russian troops attempted to advance on Ukraine's two biggest cities. In Kharkiv, an eastern city with a population of 1.5 million, videos posted online showed explosions hitting the region's administrative building and residential areas. Throughout the country, many Ukrainian civilians spent another night huddled in shelters, basements, or corridors. The casualty toll mounted as Ukraine faced day six of a Russian invasion. Hopes for a negotiated solution to the war dimmed after a first five-hour session of talks between Ukraine and Russia yielded no stop in the fighting, though both sides agreed to another meeting in the coming days. That's your 104.5 The Flame News Update. I'm Lisa Stewart. Get your praise on with the sounds of victory. 104.5 flame the hottest star in b hits and oldies bigger and better this is a paid advertisement it does not represent the views of wflm ownership management or staff this is the cleveland gary show on 104.5 wflm the flame hi welcome to the cleveland gary show beyond sports i'm cleveland gary your host Tonight, we will have a special guest who is a music artist. She's had music in her heart, her soul, her mind ever since she was seven years old. She lives, eats, and breathes music. She's an amazing writer, has produced several songs, and we will have her on the show tonight. We talk about business, sports, and I wanted to add an entertainment section because entertainment, after all, is a form of a sport, I would say, but in, you know, entertainment is a big business. You have, uh, uh, I mean, I'm an avid music listener. And back in the day, I thought I could sing. So I tried to sing a little bit, but I realized I really couldn't sing, um, but I am an avid music lover. So we're very, very excited, very excited this evening to have uh, an amazing artist uh, who loves music with a passion. We're just gonna pick her brain and talk about the music business, her career, her aspirations, and uh, what advice she would give to aspiring music artists who want, want to build a name, build a brand in the music business. So we're excited about that. Now, in addition to that, I will also have um, not only my partner, but a very, very bright, very smart, uh, brilliant businessman who's, a, uh, who's perfected who's perfected the crowdfunding market. And uh, in addition, works with me in the public arena, being that we have a publicly traded company called Ecrit. And so he's going to be with me tonight and we're going to just talk and uh, dialogue with one another. We call this our Think Tank Hour. Now, also, I would like for you to go to clevelandgary.com and sign up or sign in if you have not, sign up if you have not signed up already, and uh, join the social media family here. It's all about interacting. Post your comments, post questions, answer comments, reply to comments, and uh, that's what we want to do. We want to build a social network, interact with each other, ask questions in the area of business, entertainment. It's all about unity, unifying, being together part of it take you know we want to get over the bridges of troubled waters by helping each other when you look at facebook linkedin and twitter i mean it, it's 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 a brand everybody is familiar with those brands but when you are trying to build a community that involves impacting people's lives in a positive way uh, that's all we're trying to do. And, you know, my mother have always told me nothing beats a failure, but a try. You got to try. No matter what the situation is, no matter what obstacles you're facing, there's nothing wrong with, with, with trying. So the social media platform is a way for us to dialogue together, emanating from the Cleveland Gary show via the flame. We're so thankful for, for Alice and Larry for giving us this opportunity to dialogue with you. And uh, we're just excited about it. Um, also tonight, we're going to have a trivia question. Somewhere, at some moment, at some time during this show. And uh, the winner of that trivia question will win $250. Now, here's how it happens. In order for you to win that $250, this is what you have to do. You have to go to clevelandgary.com 
you have to register. You have to register, or if you already registered, you have to log in and your profile will come up. It will populate. And up in the right hand corner, it will say type in answer. And you're going to type in the answer to that trivia question. All right, so let's repeat this again. In order for you to win the $250, you have to go to clevelandgarrett.com. You have to either log in or sign up. It's free, no charge. And when you log in or sign up, it will take you to your profile. Now, in the right-hand corner, you will see it says type in your answer. So when I give you the trivia question right here on air for the world to hear, you're gonna, the first one that types in the answer to the trivia question wins $250. Now, here's how the system works. If you type in the right answer, it's gonna say winner, correct answer. If you type in the wrong answer, it's gonna say wrong answer. Now, if the winner, the first time the winner gets it right, if you type in an answer after that, it's gonna say winner has already been chosen. So that's what I, one of the things I love about this social media platform and going forward, I wanna get the corporations involved and I wanna add more trivia questions. That's, that's, that's my goal. One of my goals is to add more trivia questions so you can win more money. It could be a down payment on your business to start up. And there is no limit as to what we can accomplish. And, uh, and I just want, this is a starting block. This is, and we want to finish this by creating a platform uh, for you. We wanna monetize the trivia questions where, you, where there's more than one person winning a lot of money. But we started somewhere, we had to start somewhere. And that somewhere is you can win $250 tonight. So we're excited about it. Go to clevelandgirl.com, sign up to log in. You can win the $250, but also post your comments, post questions to answer you need, answers you need answered. And as, a, as your helpmate, all of us, all of us are in this together. Let's dialogue with each other. Let's connect, let's friend request each other. And uh, let's just make, let's make the situation, our situation individually, a better situation by collectively coming together, listening to 104.7, listening to the flame, awesome hours of great, great, great enter entertainment, great information has been disseminated to you. Uh, and this is what living is all about, networking, being a part of, of a winning team. And that's what this show is all about, all right? Now, we're gonna move forward to our first guest. She's um, an amazing mu music artist. Um, she's done exceptionally well, hard worker. Um, I've known her since she was the age of zero, all right? Up until this very moment. And so I'm very proud of her. I had, has a phenomenal passion for people, love people. Um, overgiving to anyone. And I'm just so happy for her. And uh, she has an amazing, amazing son, Egypt. And, uh, but she loves her music. Boy, you cannot keep her away from writing music. And so Anaya, I'm so happy to have you here, here with us this evening. Thank you for joining us, uh, taking some busy time out and uh, zooming into this call. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Your music career has been in existence for many, many, many years. And uh, you've written a lot of music. Uh, you had a, you have a tremendous passion, un, you know, tremendous drive to uh, get your music out to the world. Tell me about your love for music. When did it begin? And uh, uh, when did it begin? And, and why are you so passionate about it? And I'm sure you've had a lot of pitfalls. What have kept you uh, pursuing your dream and uh, just tell me a little bit about your aspirations for music. Yeah, so a lot of pitfalls, that's definitely true, but um, my love for music really started since I can remember. I remember my mom would say like I would just sing around. I know I'd be washing the dishes singing and just everything I do, I'd just be singing. Um, and I mean, honestly, I know it's from God. It's a gift from God. And I know I'm here to change the world. Um, one song at a time. So it just started when I was really young. And then I think 
um, you know, the older I got, I got, you know, focused on other things and kind of tried to do other things. But I think it comes down to like my light inside of me, you know, and I think like when people recognize that, who they are and their actual purpose and just continue to pursue that. Um, over time, I just couldn't fight it anymore. And I just really locked in. Um, really, when I went to college, I went to school in Orlando for a little bit and just got around a lot of creative and talented Black people, you know what I mean, that really were just following and pursuing their dreams and just encouraged me to do the same. So I learned a lot. Um, and that's really where I decided to, to take it seriously and be professional. Hmm. What would you say some of the biggest struggles uh, in the music business, because I'm sure there were times you wanted to throw in the towel. I'm sure those days uh, were in existence. What did you do to overcome the tough days, the tough days in the business? So I would honestly say, I actually have not ever come across a time where I wanted to throw in the towel. That's one thing I always knew was my love for music that no matter what, like I would go through, I knew my purpose. And I knew regardless, it's not a matter of if, but when I say that in one of my songs, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when. So I never once doubted that there might've been a lot of obstacles. Um, but overcoming those, I think it's just time, like letting time happen and timing. Um, I know it might not happen today, but I just know God's plan is it's going to happen. So the best thing I can do is just keep moving forward. Um, and really just not putting so much pressure on myself, but still having a sense of urgency. You know what I mean? Not letting time slip away, but just knowing that it's all going to evolve how it needs to. I think that's like how I can just kind of overcome all the stuff that goes on. Because a lot goes on. And I think being a woman in the industry, especially a Black woman, is a huge obstacle. I know I speak for all women. There's just a way you have to kind of navigate when you talk to people. And um, so I think just being consistent and pursuing your highest self kind of allows people to gravitate toward you so that you can focus more so on the music and then kind of allow, you know, like team members and managers and that kind of thing to handle the business stuff, but just making sure that you're always on top of everything. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. You know, Naya, the music business has evolved. It has changed so much, you know, uh, back yeah. in my, you know, uh, we would walk inside of, a, uh, we would listen to a song we like on the radio, the radio, and uh, we would stop by the record store. You walk inside a physical building and uh, you would see all these CDs and uh, they would have those hit records, you know, that you're listening to on the radio. And you, you would find that record, or if you couldn't find it, you would ask, hey, I need this record. They would pull it out of inventory and you would pay for it, stick the CD in your car. And uh, like myself, I would listen to the same song at least 24 hours until it wore, <laughs> wore off a little bit. Yeah. But that's not the case anymore. You know, with the MP3s and social media, what what's your what's your knowledge on the music industry as a whole? Do you realize the drastic change in the mm -hmm. music? Because your your genre, the millennials, uh, it's it's totally different. Uh, mm -hmm. different yeah, like because I was born in '94, so I started listening to music and got inspired by watching like TRL or 106 in Park on BET. That's how I got inspired. Um, and so I remember going and getting CDs at the store. You know, I remember going and getting the Britney Spears album or the Brandy album or like having my mom with the, you know, with what is it, the like the album with all the CDs and seeing Tevin Campbell's Purple CD in there and like playing that over and over. So I remember that. And then I remember the elevation going to LimeWire and going and like, you know, illegally downloading the songs and putting them on, on, you know, on the disc. Like, that's what I remember. And then, yeah, just over time, the iPod coming out. And now, then so, right? yeah, now, now. Apple, the iPod coming out and being able to put your, all your songs on the iPod. So I, I see, I saw all of it. You know, I saw the whole evolution at a really young age. And then coming to now, you know, we have um, platforms like DistroKid you know, in TuneCore, now we have United Masters where anybody can upload a song, anybody down the street. You know, you live in an apartment or a neighborhood and you got six people down the street that all do music and we can all upload our songs. 
So I think there's really good and bad to that because, you know, clearly the market's very oversaturated and it's no longer like a record label is looking to pick people and say, oh, I'm going to develop you. You know what I mean? You really have to develop yourself and you have to build your own platform. Um, so there's, there's good and bad to that, but I'm grateful for it because I know it's opening the door for a lot of different people and it's kind of breaking down the mold of what people think an artist should be, you know? Right. Interesting because, you know, back in the day, you would go into a record company like a Capitol Records. I lived mm -hmm. in Austin and, um, and I had the privilege of going into Capitol Records anytime I want, you know, being I played football. So I knew everybody out there in the music business. You know, I was able to go up into Capitol Records and walk around without supervision. And I watched where Nat King Cole did his albums and I watched with Frank Sinatra, uh, you know, the MC Hammers, what door they came in. And they came, you know, it's, it's like they went into the record label and they got a deal, like mm -hmm. an event on record soul. Back then, that's the way you made it. But in today's game, that's non-existent. You have to, I mean, it's crazy. You got to utilize Spotify, you know, social networking. How is the media, how is the record business today? What does it take? to be number one. How are those artists, uh, how do they get to the top? It's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the key in branding yourself and getting to the top and selling records? What is the key? Well, you know what? You know, that's the blueprint. That's, that's the million dollar question. That's what we're all trying to figure out. So that's what <laughs> I'm doing every day, you know? Right. That's what we're trying to figure out. Once I, once I get the formula, you know, I will, I will share it. But from what I see, because I did go to school, like I mentioned in Orlando, and like I, I know people that are, you know, writing Grammy award winning songs right now and producing them and stuff like that. I feel like God aligned me with a lot of really amazing, talented people. What I see is it's hard work and consistency. And it's not even necessary, and it's marketing and it's money, those four things. It's not even necessarily how talented are you. There's millions of us that are talented and that's just the truth. And I think once you learn that as an artist, it gets you to go in business mode. You know what I mean? And so like for me, I mean, my schedule is packed every day, hour to hour. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm working, I'm in school, I'm a mom, I'm doing music, I'm working out, just trying to, you know, there's so many things I'm doing that I think is the golden ticket. It's being consistent and it's holding yourself accountable. And then it's, not making excuses and coming up with a budget because at the end of the day it comes down to money and marketing yourself um and social media is is the way to do that you know facebook ads instagram sponsored ads now youtube ads TikTok. that's what that's the key no that's unbelievable we we don't know what a TikTok or youtube none of that you go into the record label back in the day and you get hooked up, boy. They give yep. you that. They give you that check. You got that advance. Now I don't know how much money you're gonna make if mm -hmm. you sell units. I don't know what kind of deal you struck with the record company, but they gave you that advance that they counted against those royalties. But today, it seems like it's so discombobulated. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone can do a song. Anyone can literally edit a song and upload that song. But if you don't have the resources with the knowledge to push that song you know, man, you pushed way in the yeah. back. But on another note, who were your artists that inspired you going up uh, to keep you, I mean, say, hey, I want to do this, you know? She yeah. can do it. What were your favorite artists, the artists that inspired you growing up as a kid? So I'm going to answer that in one second, but I'm going to say one more thing about the, the artists back and walking in the record label. I think a lot of artists back then, especially artists are people, a lot of them got taken advantage of. Because they just walked in and got a deal, they did not do the knowledge or the research. They didn't, they didn't do everything, so they didn't know how this worked on the inside and out. And that's why a lot of them got taken advantage of, ended up being broke, whatever the case is. So I'll just say like, I think that it's really a good thing that it's like this because it kind of weeds out who really wants it because you have to learn how to do everything. So I'm gonna just say that. And then, um, the artist um, that inspired me, I would say like Mariah Carey for sure, Brandy, 
Brandy was like, I used to watch Moesha and Black Cinderella, you know, that's really what inspired me, like Christina Aguilera, Usher, Stevie Wonder, um, just to name a few. When I was younger watching them, I was like, wow, what is this? Like, I want to do that. Yeah. And Beyonce too, when she used to do like the behind the musics, because you know, everything wasn't out for everyone to see. There was no social media. So the only time you got to see these artists being real was, you know, when they did the behind the music or, you know, like each true Hollywood story. So. Wow, awesome. I tell you, now, I've never done this before. Uh, we got to go to break, but what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, after this break, I'm going to bring you back. So I want you to stay, uh, stay here. I didn't get a chance to ask you all the questions that I want, want to ask you. So is that okay? Do you have the time? I'm going to bring you back here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. I want you to keep those dials locked and we're going to come back with Anaya. Keep those dials locked. We'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connected Connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at BlackShoppingChannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home, you want a car, but your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCred, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCred's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy for closure or collections. For more information, go to www.ecrid.com. Create your own ecrid credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecrid. Go to www.ecrid.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product schedule live stream events music artists sell your music and control your career it's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists go to black shopping channel and shop today black wall street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com the black shopping channel giving back moving forward 104.5. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Hi, welcome back. 
to Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host, and we're here with the music artist, talented music artist, should I say, Anaya. I didn't get a chance to finish uh, asking her uh, some questions, the questions that I, that I plan on asking her. So I asked her to come back on the second half of the show. And uh, Bill Houston will be joining me here uh, shortly. Uh, Naya, I wanted to ask you, now how many songs have you written thus far? Mm. I've written probably, probably over a hundred songs to be very honest. Yeah, I um, most recently for this project that I have coming out, I recorded about like a little over 40 songs in like a two month period. Mm -hmm. Had a lot to get out. So a lot. Now, what is the What is your most favorite song you've written? Now, I, I, I heard one of your songs that's going to be coming out here. Can I say the name? I, I, can I say the yeah. song Pray? That's the song. Right. We had a Mm -hmm. that I didn't get a chance to, you know, but low, but how, how do we, uh, you know, you have a website. Is there any way we can mm -hmm. access music? How do we, what's your website or how do we access your music? Yeah. Um, so my songs are like my kids. So no, I don't have a favorite, you know, you can't, they all do certain things, you know, they have their strengths right. and their weaknesses. So, you know, um, but my website is anaya.com and that's a N I I I. Y A. I, 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 that's two three eyes. eyes three, three eyes. It's like for your third eye. Yeah. Like, yeah third eye. Eye. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's A N I I I Y A. A N I I I Y A. Yeah. Right. It's it's the way you spell my name, just three eyes. Got it. Got it. Anaya.com. And that's me on um all platforms like Instagram, Anaya Music, Apple Music, Anaya. Spotify and I am. What so what 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 information would, would you give aspiring artists who may be having a little tough time, believe in their God given skills, mm -hmm. and they just need a push. They need to hear some kind of encouraging word to know that 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 it's not over, regardless of what they're going through. And uh, you know, if I may intervene and pause right for a second, that's why I like the social media platform because I want all music artists out there right now to go to clevelandgear.com. Those of you who have comments uh, or questions about the music industry, and and I can go and dialogue with you and you guys can dialogue with each other. You got writers of music, producers of music, aspiring artists, and we wanna build a networking community. We even have marketing phenoms that knows how to get music out there in the workplace. And that's what this social media platform is all about. And uh, Naya, you can go ahead and proceed. What aspiring mm -hmm. information will you give an artist who, who just having a tough time, but they just need a little pick me up? Mm -hmm. What would you, you say to them? I would say to, it's so funny because when I was younger and people would say like, believe in yourself or like, I would be like, that's so cliche. But the older I've gotten, I've really realized the most valuable piece of information is to truly believe in yourself. There's going to be doubts. I think we all have doubts in our head. You know, we have those negative thoughts that tell us, oh, we're not good enough or, you know, you're not like this person. But I would really say believe in yourself and and stick to that because no one can be like you. And that is the strength that you have is being yourself. I used to compare myself to different artists and stuff and I'm who I am. So I would say that and, and work hard. Really push yourself outside of your comfort zone and work as hard as you possibly can. When you go to sleep at night, be tired for a reason. That's what I'd say. Last question, last question. You ready? I'm ready. What drives you? Mm, okay. Well, I'll give you the short answer because that's like a very loaded question. But uh, what drives me is my, my son, for sure. My little Egypt drives me every day to really just, I look at him and I'm just like, I want everything for you. And I just want him to not want for one thing. Um, I have a young black son, you know, and it's tough out here. So that's what drives me every day to wake up and just be the best I can be is so I can provide for him how he deserves. Awesome, awesome. Well, now I wanna thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you. I'm sure Love we'll you. have 
back back here again. You're very talented, very beautiful, and uh, love you as a dad. I was say for y'all that don't know, this is my dad. So <laughs> thank <laughs> you for coming. Thank yes, you. thank you for having me. You're welcome. All, All right. right, Naya the artist. Um, you ready for the trivia question? You ready? Nah, I'll wait, I'll wait. All right, trivia question. You gotta go to clevelandgary.com. You have to sign up or register, all right? If you have not uh, uh, signed up yet, you have to sign up in order to win, potentially win the $250. Or if you're already a member, just log in and you'll see in your profile the section where it says, type in your answer. And I'm going to ask you a trivia question here momentarily. And if you answer that trivia question first, you will win $250. You will be set for life. You will never have to worry again. All the McDonald's, plug in McDonald's, all the Dunkin' Donuts, because I love their decaf coffee with extra cream. I should use regular cream, but I don't know what happened. And now I'm using extra cream. I normally use regular cream, but you will have the money to buy all the decaf coffee you want. All the McDonald's cannot beat it. So sign up. Moving forward, the next person I want to bring onto the platform to show is Bill Houston, a guy that I work with. Uh, hi, Bill. Nice to have you. Bill and I are in the trenches together on a daily basis, a very brilliant man. Uh, he's phenomenal in the research department. And uh, he knows crowdfunding like the back of his hand. And uh, he and I, we're gonna dialogue, you know, in this chat room. Uh, but what, what I really wanna stress about Bill, he cares about people, he cares. And there's nothing Bill would not do uh, to make the team better. If it's, if it can impact somebody's life, he's going to be there. You know, he, he puts his heart and his passion before the money. And uh, because it, I'm, I've always, you know, my mom, well, mom have always told me, if you put your heart effort into anything, the money will come. But you have to operate with, with passion and integrity and uh, the byproduct is the money. You know, if you're focusing on the money, then uh, I just, um, you're bound to make, you know, unnecessary mistakes. No different, you know, in my NFL career and playing football, I love the game so much, I would have done it for free. It just so happened they paid me to do it. You know, I was like, how nuts can you be? You know, you're going to pay me to do something that I love to do. And so I've carried that with me throughout my life. You know, I want to do something that I'm passionate about doing because I don't have to get up and go to work every day. I get up and go do what I'm passionate about. And when I look at our companies like Ecred, you know, the Black Shopping Channel, the first minority shopping channels in America, you know, when you are doing something that you're really passionate about, it helps you to overcome the obstacles because you're so driven, because you love what you're doing so much, you don't necessarily think about the money. But let's be realistic. It takes money to run businesses. And, uh, but we're very excited. So Bill, it's always a pleasure to dialogue with you and thank you once again for taking out time of your busy schedule to join us here at the, at the show. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be on. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed listening uh, you know, to Anaya talk about the crowd economy, talk about the economy that is driven by platforms, um, you know, most of my life was lived in the, in the 20th century um, before the internet. So the way I saw the world was through the eyes of a very small group of people, right? So, uh, you know, when you talked about going into the record company, there was a really small group of people who picked the music that I had the opportunity to listen to, who picked the television shows that I had the opportunity to listen to. Uh, who picked the books. Now, <clears throat> when I say a small group of people, you know, considering how many people it is in the world, that, that's a very small group of people. With the advent of the internet and the platforms, you know, that is all history. Um, you know, you, you talk about crowdfunding 
And I like to talk about the crowd economy. And what I mean by that is if you're able to build a crowd of people who are engaged with whatever it is you're doing, you can literally monetize that crowd, whether it's investing in your business, whether it's listening to your music. It's, you know, the, the platform allows us to be who we are, to engage with the people who do like us, who do see value in us, and then we can monetize that. And, and that is such a that is such a great opportunity. And you know, when I when I saw that you had moved into the social media space uh, with the ClevelandGary.com, I was really excited. Um, you know, <laughs> what's really interesting is we have become so used to that uh, freemium model on the larger social media platforms that we, what we don't realize is that we are what they're selling. Right. So those social media platforms, it feels like, oh, I get on here and it's free and, you know, and I get to, you know, engage with my family and, uh, you know, it, it is free, but but they're selling our eyeballs to these big corporations. And, um, you know, in the world that we live in today, we have the opportunity ourselves, each of us, right, to to become social media influencers, right? Now our met networks may not be as huge as some of the big artists, but we can we can create our own crowds, work with those crowds and monetize those crowds. So I'm really excited, uh, you know, to be working with you Cleveland on the uh, clevelandgary.com. Uh, that, that's really exciting for me. Well, thank you. You know, when you look at consumer spending, when you look at the different sectors of the economy, um, whether it's biotech, fintech, industrial, what have you, uh, all of those industries are dependent upon one thing to survive, and that's called consumer participation. And I think we don't, some of us don't realize that. And with the advent of social media, the advent of the internet, and mind you, TV is not going anywhere. Think of a screen. People like watching a big sc screen. The only difference is you're putting applications, Roku, Amazon, Fire TV. You know, the, it's just the, the mythology changes a little bit uh, and, and it's, it has evolved. But the key bill, you know, when you, when you think about consumer spending, we are huge spenders as minorities and we participate without the consumer support there will be no 10Ks growing incrementally in the secondary market as it relates to the stock market. There are no way, that doesn't matter. So you, you, you can put somebody up on a pedestal and say how, cheap, how brilliant they are, not realizing that you, you, you and you, the consumers, make them brilliant. Your dollars is what validates the success of any corporation. And when you have the ability to change the entire economy with where you spend your money, that's pretty powerful. So when you look at a person, you can look at them several ways. You can look at, okay, if they're smart, you know, what size, what color, you know, there's so many parameters you can look at, but ask yourself this question, why am I spending my money at this corporation? Why do I spend my money at that corporation? Is it because of the freestanding building? I'm driving by my car and that's a great marketing tool. You know, retail, you know, your retail location. But now the advent of the internet has become so strong, so powerful, which is confirmed by the success of Amazon, where people are buying products in record numbers ship at the front of the door. And we have been trained as consumers to follow down that path. Trained, never in a million years. When my mother, I could envision her buying products shipped at her door from Amazon. Never in a million years would I have ever thought I would go on the internet and buy a product and it's shipped in front of my door. But we have to understand as small business owners, we have the same ability. We have the same skill set.
to disseminate information, products in the same manner. But if we lack the knowledge to not, if we lack the knowledge, you know, the Bible says, lack of knowledge of man shall what shall fail. And I understand there's gonna always be people that are not as fortunate financially than others. You know, the Bible is true. But there are many brilliant entrepreneurs that are different shades of color, different races more so. But all they need is the knowledge to understand that they can do this too. And you have to start somewhere. It takes a penny to make a dollar. And I say this not to push you to go to clevelandgarrett.com and sign up. And, I mean, that's, that's not what this is all about. This is all about dialoguing in this chat session over, we have an hour, you know, from seven to eight to understand what you're capable of doing for yourself. And, uh, you know, so if we're buying, spending $1.3 trillion as minority consumers and all these other corporations, why not take the time and say, look, I wanna support this business, you know, as a consumer. But, but if you're networking, they're gonna support me. The African-American dollar, as we know, stays in the community only four hours once we get it. So if you're working at somebody's business, whether it's Parker and Gamble, McDonald's, you get a paycheck. But statistically, statistically, that money only stays in the minority community for four hours. Under the other umbrellas of ethnicity, ethnic, it stays in there five or six, six days. And so it's okay to build bridges over troubled waters. The point is that's all we're doing. When we say go to the social media platform, sign up, interact with each other, tell people about your products, tell people about what you're doing. That's basically what we're doing. And, and you gotta start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that you said that, that's really important. Um, and, and, you know, this is what the platforms and the crowd economy really provide for us. And that is the, the ability to act collectively. Now, you know, in this society, a lot of times you're told to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, you know, man up and do it yourself. And, you know, that's not really the way it works. Uh, you know, as what you were just saying, Cleveland, that, you know, we are all buying products from these major corporations. That's what makes them super wealthy. It's not one person who's doing that. It's not that they pull themselves up by their bootstraps. It's the collective ability, um, you know, to move money into one place. Uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon, they, uh, you know, I've, I've read a lot about their story and it was very interesting because for the longest time, they focused on building their infrastructure. Um, and they didn't make money. People kept investing in them and kept investing in them. And people said, oh, this is a bad investment. They're not making any money. They're not making any money. But what they were doing is they were building their infrastructure. So they had their processes, their back end. And that's what's, that's what's really important in business is that back end, how your processes work, because that is what's going to lead you know, to your profits. And today, when, when you order something on Amazon and you look out, the door and you see them pull up, they're pulling up in an Amazon Prime truck, right? So they Amazon, you know, from the time, from the time you get on the internet until that package is delivered to you uh, with Amazon tape on it. I'm looking at, I'm looking at an Amazon Prime box over here now in my yeah. house. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it everything is Amazon and it's, you know, it's, it's the branding. And, you know, with the social media, deciding who it is that you want to engage with and network with, and then finding that place and being able to get there. I, I think that that's really important to understand that is that with the internet, right? We each have the power to make those choices that we didn't have before. Um, you know, there are so many television stations that, that I have the ability to watch today or so many programs, right? They're not stations in the sense that I'm talking about. You know, when I was a kid growing up, you know, there was NBC, CBS, ABC, and then there was the ultra high frequency station and PBS. <laughs> that was it. That, that right. Those were all the choices yeah, that you got. Three you know, or four channels, huh? Three or, man, watch. that three or four channels. That that was it. I you know I used to uh, laugh when I when I would tell my oldest kids about 
you know, in the in the early in the morning, you know, you would watch Soul Train. And by the time the end of the day came around, you know, you're watching Hee Haw and Lawrence Welk because you just didn't have the opportunity to watch what you wanted to watch like you do today. And, um, you know, so so we can choose where we want to go to, where we want to spend our time, who we want to network with and the information that we want to get from these people and then how we can work together with them. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that is really powerful. And as I said, you know, when, when I saw the clevelandgary.com and that he had added social media to that, I was like, wow, this is really exciting because we can have these conversations, uh, you know, right here on the Cleveland Gary show. And then we can continue those conversations later on or, you know, the next day or whenever, right? Because, you know, you go there, you go to Let's Talk and, you know, you can literally talk to, to the guest that he has on the show and you can talk to him. And I think that's really exciting. Thank you, Bill. We're going to cut to a break and um, we'll be right back, Bill and I to continue this conversation on business and how it can impact your life. And uh, when I come back, uh, I will ask uh, the trivia question, okay? So keep those dials locked, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way, I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life determine who you become black wall street in tulsa oklahoma was a true event that took place a group of african americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community they were so financially successful until they were bombed beaten many killed resulting in destroying what was once known as black wall street the black shopping channel is back on the street again to stay Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip-hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home. You want a car. But your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCred, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCred's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy for closure or collections. For more information, go to www.ecred.com. Create your own ecred credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecred. Go to www.ecred.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your products. Product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, 
or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Hi, hey, welcome back. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host, Beyond Sports. I'm here with my partner, Bill Houston, talking business. The trivia question tonight, are you ready? That's the question. Are you ready? Bill, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Now, Bill, you cannot participate. That you can I think you know the answer, right? Did you see the answer today? You can't I, cheat. That's man, cheating. I was already logged in and ready to go. <laughs> You ready to go? All right, here we go. Here is the trivia question of tonight. You answer this question, you win $250. Now, in order to win, you have to be in the right area. Go to clevelandgear.com. I'm gonna give you one more shot at it. Go to clevelandgear.com. All right, you log in if you have a social uh, account, social media account, or you sign up. It's free, you're right there in your portal on your profile page, and you can type an answer in the top right corner and win the $250. Now, the winner of the trivia question, I will uh, uh, tell you who that winner is next week, uh, seven to eight. I will tell you who the winner is, who won that $250. Man, I hope, man, you know, it'd be nice if we can add zeros to that, right? Man, you know, so many people need some capital infusion in that, 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 that their business, that would be nice. But $250, man, that, that's a lot of money, all right? All right, here's a trivia question. Who was, gotcha, I gotcha, all right? You thought I was just gonna say it, right? Should I wait five more minutes? Should I say, no, 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 no. I, I, I'll say it, okay. Who was the first black woman to receive a United States patent? I repeat. Who was the first black woman to receive a United States patent? That's on record. That's the question. Fill in the answer. The first one that gets it right, we will introduce the winner next week. Show you win two hundred and fifty dollars. What do you think about that question? Interesting. Huh? That is a good question. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer. That, that is a good question. I, I, I think I have a pretty good idea, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you got to type it in. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I mean, I'm so, so grateful. You know, I mean, I, I'm hoping we can, can ask, you know, give out more money. That's so important. And uh, as we grow, that's something we will do. You know, Bill, we talk about this all the time. Our ultimate goal is to fund small business at, at record levels. That's our goal. We want to fund small businesses at record level. I believe the small business owner who've been deprived of capital works so hard, people, they're just ignored. They work so hard, they could take $100,000 or $200,000 and build an empire, build a multi-million dollar business. All they need is the opportunity. That's all they need. But what you got to understand, you have to understand this. If you can change, there's two sides to a coin, the heads and the tail. One side, you just look at it, deem it as a small business owner, needs funding, you know, $100,000, $200,000. If you sell jewelry, you need pieces. That's called your cost of product on your income statement. You need adequate marketing dollars to get the word out. That's on your income statement. And, um, the key here, you, you're driven, you have the passion, and that's the first step. But now you have the funding, and we will provide educational tools with you inside the forum. You can ask us any questions. We don't want you to fail, we want you to succeed. And learning how to manage that capital and grow your business, scale that business, grow it incrementally is the key to your success. And understanding that TV, that the shows like this, creates the opportunity for us, not you as an individual, it's us to, to network and uh, support each other in the most important powerful category to be a successful business owner, you must have a consumer platform. And when you sign up, you can't just ignore 
what's in front of you today. You know, the lack of knowledge, biblically, the man, a man will perish. We got to take action. You know, you just can't look at us. You just can't hear us and don't process the information to a point to where you're not making it work. You have, we have this is a call to action conversation here. You got to do something about it. It's more than just listening and saying, man, I got some good information. Oh man, that's a nice show Cleveland has. He's interacting with people, man. He's giving out some good information. That's not what this is all about. This is about you being proactive, putting you in a position of being proactive and then act, acting and start creating and building bridges over troubled waters. If you understood the power you have as a consumer collectively, it'll run It'll, it'll run up in the area of the GDP, the gross domestic product. It's that powerful. But you have to put forth a plan of action. You just can't hear and listen and say, oh, man, a great show. That's not what this is all about. I'm not so much interested in having a great show. I'm interested in having an impactful show that can make a difference in your life. And, you know, we talk about ECRIT, you know, a new credit bureau. <clears throat> the new credit bureau, like your Equifax, your TransUnion, and your Experian, with its own lending division. And um, I saw something recently that Experian had put out in the press about creating a credit report. We invented the concept, creating your own credit report, a B2C uh, infrastructure where you go online and pay your own bills and create, and you have total control over your credit report. You pay your bills through the Eker Bill Pay portal. It updates immediately. And it puts you right in front of the Eker lending portal that can say, okay, based upon the Eker credit report, they deserve this house at a good interest rate. Even though they had a bankruptcy collections or liens on the Equifax or Spirit and um, TransUnion credit report, but they're making money. Their income to debt ratio now is positive. Why can't we get them at a home at a decent interest rate? And that's what I love about ECRIT. So with crowdfunding, you can raise the initial capital to get you started and, uh, and build specialized in that. But with having the public traded company, we're able to monetize from our treasury. What that means, we're able to take uh, our stock and build the business because it's very important. When you're talking about getting people in the homes, and Bill can comment on this, you're talking about 14 million, and I'm going to pause and let Bill take over, you're talking about 14 million African-American families that are uh, in, in America, and when Bill give you these statistics on how many of them are renting, but they have good jobs, but they're stifled, they're bottlenecked because of the credit bureaus. And Bill, just, just touch on that, how, how sad that is. When we do research, we sit down and we talk about it. It really breaks your heart, man, to know that a person wants to get in a home. It's embarrassing. They got the money to do it, but the system will not allow them to do it. You know, one of the things that's really interesting about what you just said is that in, in, in the Black community, 70% of our wealth is held in our homes, in our primary residence, 70% um, of that. And the interesting fact about that is that only about 44% of us actually own homes. So what that tells us is that there is a lot of wealth that, that we are giving away selling to someone else because um you know in the in the home ownership market um you know in the rental market you have to have somewhere to live that's not a choice right you have to have a place to live and uh you know this is an old adage that goes back you know to when i was really young and it says that either you're paying your mortgage or you're paying somebody else's mortgage off and what ecrit does is it puts you in a position even if you've made some mistakes in life, it puts you in a position to get back to a place without having to wait seven years where you can actually get your credit score up where it needs to be, get a mortgage and get in a house and start paying off your mortgage and stop paying off someone else's mortgage and start building wealth. And that's what it's all about is wealth today and wealth tomorrow for, you know, for the future generations. Thank you, Bill. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I just want 
us to be the very best that we can be. I, mean, I want you to be the best that you can be. And um, you can live in a house, you can drive a car, and, um, and you can say I've made it, but you really haven't until you can reach back and make a difference and impact someone else's life. Just my opinion, I don't think you've reached a level of what is deemed as success. And so it's okay to make money. Don't ever be a player hater because someone else is doing well and, 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 and you know, just understand that you are special. You have something deep inside of you that you just not have allowed to evolve because you have the wrong frame of mind. And if you work with people, no man's an island, you'll see how your life begin to change. But if you start supporting others, others will support you. Some people call it karma. I mean, I don't, the bottom line, if you support others, they will support you. If you believe in others, they will believe in you. And, you know, I've always have known growing up as a kid, I was taught it's better to give than to receive. And some people may look at me now like I'm crazy, but it's true. Try it. It becomes a comfortable way of living. Not saying that it eradicates you from having tough times. It, it stops you from going through, you know, your trials and tribulations. That's inevitable. Their only trials and tribulations are only there to make us better. So you have to welcome your trials and tribulations because if you're not getting them, you're not growing as a person, just my opinion. And that's what helps us to grow. So embrace those times because we need those to help make us better people. Now, before we depart tonight, I want to read the trivia question again and uh, to give you a chance, you know, to win it to 50 bucks. Who was the first black woman to receive a United States patent? That's the question. Next week, I will tell you who the winner was and maybe ask them for a moment, you know, maybe ask them to take us to McDonald's or Burger King or something like that. But no, it was really nice, you know, Naya, I mean, it was so, it was nice to, to, to hear her views about music. And I'm sure some of you music lovers learned a lot about the music business. And it's always a pleasure to talk with my, my partner and friend, Bill Houston, about, about business, crowdfunding and, and uh, IPOs and what have you. It was a great show, great time. And um, before we depart, I would just like to say, it's nice having you as listeners, because without you, this show could not be what it, what it has become. So I just want to thank you listeners, all of you, for your support. Um, next next uh, Tuesday, I'll give you the winner. But we have to go now. We have to check out. And I just want to say, you take care of yourself, and uh, may God bless you, and we will see you next week. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5.